SpaceX just surrendered. China built their space station in 18 months. The ISS took 13 years. Their Tiangong looks futuristic while NASA uses 25-year-old tech. But wait, it gets worse. China starts lunar base construction in 2026, copies SpaceX's best tricks, and moves so fast even Elon's worried. How did America's 60-year space dominance crumble this quickly? What secret advantage does China have that NASA doesn't? Let's dive right in. Here's what happened behind closed doors at SpaceX headquarters last month. Elon Musk stood before his engineering team and said five words that changed everything. China's beating us at engines. The room fell silent. This wasn't about politics or national pride. This was about cold, hard engineering facts that SpaceX could no longer ignore. While everyone focused on SpaceX's flashy rocket catches, China quietly achieved something that sent shockwaves through Hawthorne. Their new rocket engines aren't just copying SpaceX's designs anymore. They're surpassing them. And the numbers don't lie. But how did we get here? And what does this mean for America's space future? Remember when SpaceX's Raptor engine was considered impossible? Full-flow stage combustion, 300-bar chamber pressure, methane fuel, engineering marvels that took SpaceX over a decade to perfect. The Raptor was supposed to be untouchable for at least another generation. China just proved that wrong in 18 months. Their new YF215 engine operates at 350 bar chamber pressure. That's 17% higher than Raptor 2. It produces 520,000 pounds of thrust compared to the Raptor's 460,000. But here's the kicker. It costs 60% less to manufacture than a Raptor engine. How is this possible? China didn't just reverse engineer SpaceX's technology, they improved it. While SpaceX spent years perfecting their manufacturing process, China started with 2024 technology from day one. No legacy systems, no outdated tooling, no, that's how we've always done it mentality. Think about that for a second. SpaceX's greatest advantage just became their biggest weakness. Three weeks ago, a classified briefing took place at Johnson Space Center. NASA administrators, SpaceX executives, and Pentagon officials gathered to discuss something that should have been impossible. China's rocket engines are now more advanced than America's. The meeting lasted six hours. By the end, one NASA official was overheard saying, we're not just behind, we're being lapped. Here's what they discovered. China's Long March 10 rocket, powered by their new engines, can deliver 27 tons to lunar orbit for $180 million per launch. SpaceX's Starship, still in development, with projected costs of $400 million per lunar mission. China isn't just catching up. They're rewriting the economics of space exploration. But the real shock came from the intelligence reports. China's rocket engine production capacity is staggering. While SpaceX builds engines like custom sports cars, handcrafted, tested, and refined, China builds them like smartphones. Mass production lines, automated assembly, quality control through AI systems. SpaceX produces 200 Raptor engines per year. China is targeting 2,000 engines annually by 2026. Here's the part that should terrify every American aerospace engineer. In 2019, a former SpaceX propulsion engineer named Dr. Zhang Wei left the company to pursue opportunities in academic research. Six months later, he surfaced in Beijing, leading China's advanced rocket engine program. He wasn't alone. Over the past five years, 74 former SpaceX employees have relocated to work for Chinese aerospace companies, each one carrying years of Raptor engine development knowledge, manufacturing techniques, and design philosophies. China didn't steal SpaceX's technology. SpaceX's own engineers handed it to them. But that's not even the worst part. The engineers who stayed at SpaceX are now reporting something that should be impossible. Chinese aerospace companies are recruiting current SpaceX employees with offers triple their current salaries. No relocation required, just weekly consulting calls and occasional technical discussions. How do you compete with a country that treats your trade secrets like open source software? Walk into SpaceX's Hawthorne factory and you'll see cutting edge rocket manufacturing. Robotic welding, precision machining, 
Quality control systems that would make Toyota jealous? It's impressive. It's also completely obsolete compared to what China just built. Their new Wenchang facility operates on principles SpaceX hasn't even considered. Instead of building engines sequentially, they manufacture components in parallel using AI-optimized workflows. Instead of testing each engine individually, they validate designs through digital twins before physical production. The result? China can build a rocket engine in 72 hours. SpaceX takes three weeks. But here's what really should worry SpaceX. China's manufacturing process is designed for exponential scaling. Their current facility can produce 2,000 engines per year. If they need 10,000 engines, they don't build a bigger factory. They build nine identical factories. SpaceX's Hawthorne facility is custom designed for Raptor production. Changing the design means redesigning the entire production line. China's modular approach means they can iterate engine designs without rebuilding their manufacturing infrastructure. SpaceX optimized for perfection. China optimized for adaptation. The wake-up call came during Starship Flight 7. As millions watched SpaceX successfully catch their booster, something else was happening 22,000 miles above Earth. China's new Kikiao 2 communication satellite, powered by their advanced ion engines, was demonstrating station-keeping capabilities that NASA thought were impossible. Ion engines typically drift over time, requiring constant corrections. China's version maintains position autonomously using AI-controlled thrust adjustments. The fuel efficiency gains are staggering, 400% better than anything NASA operates. But here's the detail that sent shivers through mission control. China's satellite was listening, not just receiving signals, but actively monitoring and analyzing American satellite communications. Their ion engines weren't just more efficient, they were enabling surveillance capabilities that transformed space from exploration zone to battlefield. That's when SpaceX understood. This wasn't about reaching Mars anymore. This was about controlling access to space itself. Remember when international cooperation meant working with allies? China just redefined that playbook. Their international lunar research station now includes 47 countries, not just developing nations looking for handouts, major space powers choosing Chinese technology over American alternatives. The European Space Agency quietly signed a memorandum of understanding with China's space agency last month. ESA will provide navigation technology for Chinese Mars missions. In exchange, European astronauts get access to China's lunar base starting in 2028. India, despite border tensions with China, chose Chinese rocket engines for their next-generation heavy lift vehicle. Cost was 40% lower than SpaceX alternatives, with delivery timelines 60% faster. Even Australia, America's closest Pacific ally, is reconsidering their space partnerships. Chinese companies offered to build launch facilities in Queensland with zero upfront cost to the Australian government. Revenue sharing only begins after successful operations. China isn't just building better rockets. They're building a better deal. SpaceX finally unveiled Raptor 3, their answer to China's engine revolution. Cleaner design, fewer parts, better performance. 560,000 pounds of thrust compared to their previous 460,000. Engineering excellence at its finest. Then the leaked internal documents surfaced. Raptor 3 development cost, $2.3 billion over four years. China's equivalent YF215 engine development cost, $400 million over 18 months. SpaceX's engine is technically superior in almost every measurable way. China's engine is commercially superior in every way that matters. Cost, production speed, supply chain resilience, political simplicity. Elon Musk himself admitted the problem during a private investor call. We're building Formula One cars. They're building pickup trucks. Both get you where you need to go, but only one makes business sense at scale. But here's the twist nobody saw coming. Intelligence reports from the Pentagon revealed something that changed everything we thought we knew about China's space program. Their rocket engines aren't just more efficient and cheaper to build. They're designed for dual use from the ground up. Every civilian rocket China launches can be converted to military applications within 72 hours. Their satellite deployment systems double as ICBM platforms. Their lunar-based construction equipment can build fortified military outposts. SpaceX's Starship is designed to carry humans to Mars. China's equivalent carries humans to Mars and deploys orbital weapons platforms on the way. NASA just realized they weren't losing a space race. 
They were losing an arms race disguised as space exploration. Let's map out what happens next because the timeline is brutal for American space dominance. 2024, China completes engine testing for their Mars mission vehicles. SpaceX still debugging Starship reentry systems. 2025, China begins serial production of 2,000-plus rocket engines annually. SpaceX celebrates producing their 1,000th Raptor engine total. 2026, China's lunar-based construction begins with robotic precursor missions. NASA's Artemis program delays crewed landings again. 2027, China achieves total cost parity with SpaceX launches while maintaining superior reliability ratings. 2028, China's space station expands to accommodate 50-plus researchers. ISS officially retires with no American replacement ready. 2030, China launches first crewed Mars mission using moon base as staging point. NASA still planning uncrewed Mars sample return. By 2030, China doesn't just compete with American space technology. They make it irrelevant. Here's what nobody wants to admit publicly. China's space program success isn't just about better technology or cheaper manufacturing. It's about fundamentally different thinking. SpaceX optimizes for technical perfection. Every Raptor engine is a masterpiece of engineering precision. China optimizes for strategic dominance. Every engine serves multiple purposes across civilian and military applications. SpaceX builds rockets to explore space. China builds rockets to control space. SpaceX focuses on Mars colonization. China focuses on Earth orbit militarization. The question isn't whether China's rocket engines are better than SpaceX's. The question is whether SpaceX is even playing the same game China's winning. And that's the confession that changed everything at SpaceX headquarters. They weren't just losing an engineering competition. They were losing a civilization-level strategic contest they didn't even know they were fighting. So here we are. SpaceX, the company that revolutionized space travel, just admitted China is ahead in the one thing that matters most, the engines that power our future. But this story is far from over. The real question isn't whether SpaceX can catch up. It's whether America still has the will to compete when the rules keep changing. China just proved that innovation isn't about being first anymore. It's about being fastest to scale. What do you think? Is SpaceX's technical perfection worth the cost when China delivers good enough? at impossible speed? And more importantly, what happens to human space exploration when it becomes a proxy war between superpowers? The next chapter of this story is being written right now, in factories and launch pads across two continents. The question is, who's writing the ending? Engineers said it was impossible, but SpaceX just revealed metal heat shields that survive 2,000 degrees Celsius using rocket fuel as coolant. Yes, the same methane-powering Starship is now protecting it from melting. But here's what shocked everyone. Ceramic tiles kept failing, costing millions in repairs. So why risk a $500 million rocket on untested metal? What happens if the cooling system fails during re-entry? And how does this change everything we know about space travel? Flight 10 will answer all these questions in the most dangerous test yet. Let's dive right in. Here's the terrifying truth SpaceX engineers discovered after Flight 9. Every single ceramic tile costs $1,000 to manufacture. With 18,000 tiles per Starship, that's $18 million just sitting on the outside of your rocket. But here's what shocked everyone. Tiles weren't just expensive. They were falling off like dominoes. Flight after flight, SpaceX watched helplessly as their carefully crafted heat shields cracked, chipped, and detached. The payload bay doors that will deploy those 10 simulated Starlink satellites on Flight 10, they malfunctioned partly because ceramic tiles couldn't handle the thermal stress. Engineers spent months redesigning the mechanism but the root cause remained unchanged. Think about this for a second. The Space Shuttle Columbia killed seven astronauts because of one missing foam piece. Now imagine 18,000 potential failure points, each one capable of turning your $500 million rocket into space debris. Every tile that falls off creates a domino effect. 
Neighboring tiles experience increased stress and start peeling away during the most critical moments of reentry. But what if I told you SpaceX found something that shouldn't exist according to basic physics? Flight 6 revealed something that defied every engineering textbook. Under extreme heat, Starship's stainless steel hull developed microscopic crystals that actually increased its thermal resistance. This wasn't planned. It was a complete accident that could revolutionize material science forever. Picture this. You're expecting your metal to weaken under 2,000 degree heat, but instead it gets stronger, like a muscle that grows under stress rather than breaking down. SpaceX's metallurgists couldn't believe their instruments. The same steel that should have been melting was developing internal structures that fought back against the inferno. This discovery sparked something revolutionary. If steel could naturally evolve heat resistance, what if they engineered it from the beginning? Enter the impossible metal heat shield, technology that every aerospace engineer said would never work. Metal conducts heat. Metal melts. That's basic physics, right? Wrong. SpaceX just proved that basic physics has some very big blind spots. Here's where SpaceX pulled off engineering magic that sounds like science fiction. They're using rocket fuel as coolant. Yes, the same methane that powers Starship is now protecting it from becoming a fireball. This sounds completely insane until you understand the genius behind it. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Liquid methane stays stable at minus 162 degrees Celsius. It can absorb massive amounts of heat before turning to gas. But here's the brilliant part. As methane absorbs heat and becomes gas, it gets fed directly into the Raptor engines. Zero waste. The same molecule that protects your ship from burning up also powers its flight. It's like having a car that runs on its own coolant. But this creates a nightmare scenario that keeps SpaceX engineers awake at night. What happens if even one cooling channel fails during re-entry? You go from protected to dead in milliseconds. There's no gradual failure like ceramic tiles. Metal failures happen instantly. One moment you have a 